this effing show, it is this effing show, it is this effing show. Welcome to This Effing Show. A podcast by two trans men of a certain age. Hey, we're back to This Effing Show. I'm your Uncle Drew. I'm trans dad, Spencer. And we are here uh, for a new episode. And um, Spencer wants to talk about something very, very important. What is it, Spencer? Well, you know, it's it's important and it's um, it's intimate and uh, life changing, vital. Yes, extremely vital. Absolutely vital on a day to day on a yeah. micro and a macro level. Exactly. And I mean, it is, it is something that affects us daily. Yes. I hope daily. daily. I hope daily. Well, I hope it affects us daily. I'm a little yeah. worried about the people that it doesn't affect daily, but that's Word. part of the discussion. That a very important to- topic for today is, is underwear. It's underpants day. It is underpants day. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, you and I were talking about um, how underwear is like the gateway drug of queerness and transness. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and so I think we've both been thinking about how that has impacted each of us and changed over time. Mm-hmm. Um, right? So, yeah. and I think, and I have told you this story before, like when I was a little kid, one of the things that I loved was when we would go to Sweden, um, they had girls underwear, uh, that looked like boys briefs. So it mm. had like the little, you know, side panel in the front yeah. and I would make my mother buy me enough so that I didn't have to wear the floral rent with the fucking little um bow in the front underwear and the and the and the lace the lace waistband i hated those Ugh. yeah yeah <laughs> so no i got like primary colors with a contrasting you know edging um Butch. it just looked like boys briefs cool yeah and that I... as a little kid was so affirming to me did your mom, was your mom like, why do you want these? Was there any conversation or was she just like, whatever, put them in the basket? Yeah, she, she didn't seem to care. Like that was just Great. what was available in Sweden. So it wasn't like that big of a deal. I don't think that she ever, I don't think she ever thought about it that much. Awesome. That's a bonus to not get any pushback. Yeah, but I did. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember the 90s. Uh, so I graduated high school in 91. So it would have been late 80s around that time. Suddenly wearing men's boxer shorts, girls wearing men's boxer shorts was like, like that was your the shorts. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved it. And I was like, yeah, this is cool. But I felt like I was wearing underwear outside, right? Like, I think I assume that cis women were like, oh, I'm cool. I'm wearing these old boxer shorts, but I was like, well, I'm literally walking around in my underwear. So that was weird. But eventually my gateway, real gateway was being in the Navy actually. So I'm in my twenties. Um, and I started wearing boxer shorts under my dungarees. Um, I think boxer shorts definitely were, they were a pre transition thing for me, but definitely a way of, feeling like I was wearing a more correct kind of underwear. Yeah. And I, I have like the strongest memories of like sitting on the couch in the evening in just my boxer shorts, watching TV and feeling like, yeah, that's what men do. They sit around in their underwear (laughs) and they watch television. Um, was was that pre T or or post social transition? This was, was pre T. This was pre T. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, and it felt very subversive. Now yeah. that being said, I do love femmes wearing men's boxer shorts and like folding the waistband down. Yes, fucking sexy With a tank man. Top or one of my old t shirts. Yeah. yeah, get out, 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's choice. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I love boxer shorts, but after a while, like they just felt too balloony. They felt too I don't know, they felt too puffy. They felt too roomy. But For me, there I, was the chafe factor. Oh, and the on the on the in inner thigh. Insides of the thighs. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. the crotch Nobody of boxers hangs low. They do, like there's too much space in boxers. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of fabric. Why is there so much fabric? Here's my theory is that it, boxers are actually for old men and you know, age gravity things. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's things. that's my theory. I, Stretch. I don't know about grandpa's junk, but that's my theory. Yeah. Yeah. But you'd think but on you the would opposite end of the sport, sport, then. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of the op- so support, the opposite end of boxers right. to me is whitey tighties. And yeah. I never liked them. I felt goofy wearing them. I, I, feel, I felt silly wearing them. And I, I don't know why. I don't know if they were too much like underpants that I used to wear. So are you pro tighty whiteys or... So when I first started transition, I moved away from boxer shorts and back to tiny whiteys. Okay. Partly because it, they felt like they held the packer a little bit better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, and it was sort of the height of of. Uh, Calvin Klein billboards and such. Yeah. And so like the there were showing finally, your jeans. Yeah, so there were finally things that were more attractive than Fruit of the Loom or Hanes, which just felt very you t- unstylish. What's the word? You you what's the word? Dowdy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. U- utilitarian. Yeah. Those are your institution yeah. issued underwear. Yeah. So so I wasn't opposed to the look of briefs, but I was opposed to a certain kind of look of briefs. Gotcha. Because they gotcha. just felt eh, you know N- and not sexy. I think not sexy. And and being queer. I think also in being surrounded by gay men who are wearing sexy underwear, like you have a different view of underwear than the average straight guy who probably first had his mother buying his underwear and then later his girlfriend or wife buying his underwear. That's right. You don't see a lot of gay men in boxers. God, no. I can't say I've ever seen a gay man in boxers. Yeah. Not even like, you know, a, a big sexy man. There's no, there's not a lot of boxers. Yeah. No. They, they take their underwear very seriously. Yeah. Very seriously. Very. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Yes. You know, they're going to be quality and clean. And that's that's clean important. is <laughs> clean is important. Yeah. So then the other thing that I discovered over time that I hated about tidy whities is 100% cotton underwear. I just can't do it anymore. What? I'm a what? big sweaty man. I sweat <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Wet underwear is disgusting. Get that bog butt feeling. Like, like, there's nothing that you can do to dry out. Okay. You need a good synthetic blend, which is now what I, which is now what I wear, and I wear boxer briefs because, let's face it, they're comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I wear the longer ones. Um, oh. Yeah. And they have to be really colorful. Really. Yeah, <laughs> like like shining shining a colorful like a like neon. You got you got a bright light coming out of your. Oh, out dude, of your pants? I have, <laughs> I have like they all have prints on them. Not 
Prince and the Revolution Prince, but Prince, like... <laughs> well, they might have... Well, I don't have any that do have I, Prince I would support that. on them, but I have print <laughs> Prince, okay. On them. Right. Uh, everything from, uh, you know, $100 bills. Um, if I'm Get feeling paid. like I need to go out in the world and channel bringing money to me. <laughs> um, to, uh, I have uh, a bunch of underwear that has very... Uh, sort of sexy images of like women's lips like right across my junk um but yeah i really so i started uh i started going to like ross and um huh. tj max and looking at the men's underwear and they often carry um things like ethica which is a brand okay which their underwear normally sells for I don't know, 20, 25 bucks a pair, which is okay. ridiculous. Right? Correct. But you can get them at Ross if they have them for about five bucks. Yes. You're a fashionista. Oh, wait, that's. Well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. yeah. <laughs> because if I go to the supply. So do you remember the international mail catalogs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, that absurdity of strange fashion porn that was gayer than gay. Yes. yes. And we all got that fucking catalog, man. Yes. And we looked forward to getting that catalog and yes. seeing what they had. But that was like my that was like my Bible of this is what fashionable men's underwear looks like. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it was colorful and it was see through. And it was, and it, it was, was tight like, sometimes. Yes, it was tight. Oh my god! So they had, they had a pair of underwear for the longest time that was all about giving you extra package. A little, a little, a little something, a little, a little and two padding, a little padding, and a little bit <laughs> yeah. of like pull everything up and forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you, helper underpants. All right, I'm in. Exactly. It was like, ooh, this is giving me, <laughs> this is giving me knowledge I did not have before about how to enhance one's package. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, and now you have all, you know, you have like the ball hammock underwear. You have all these things where there's like a pocket to separate things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I know a lot of guys that have had fallow. Um, that find those to be very comfortable oh. post fallow, uh, especially you know. sort of in the immediate post surgery part, um, where you're wanting to keep the twig and berries separated mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. healing let purposes, them, but you breathe. also need like yeah. a lot of support for this new appendage. Do you, I'm going to put you on the spot, and if you don't know, we can always come back um, next episode. Do you sure. know any brands, for any guys that are listening, do you know any brands you would recommend that have that kind of package support? Um, so there's Ball Hammock is one of, it's literally called Ball Hammock. Oh, um, that's subtle. But there's a couple of other ones, and I'll throw them in um, the, uh, the uh, information about episodes uh, okay. when I post it. Uh, yeah, but there's a number of really good brands out there. Um, I remember, um, and it's pretty. And I never saw any straight men advertise for Andrew Christian underpants, but I think oh no, they do a little a like. Brand. Yeah, they do a nice like. Here you go, supporty. You know, and now we've got so many other businesses that are trans owned that are putting out all kinds of different underwear. So, like one of my personal favorites is Cake Bandit. Yeah, we love them. And, um, you know, they're a trans-owned manufacturer. Yeah. They make all different kinds of underwear and swim trunks. Yeah, and their stuff is good. And I like their stuff. Their stuff is great. And they, they also make stuff that's specific to wearing an STP. Oh, God bless you, boys. Uh, Thank there's you. another brand that, for the life of me, I can't remember at the moment, but um, they... Their underwear is really interesting because virtually every pair of underwear that they have, you can either buy it with 
a pouch or flat front. So if you're somebody who doesn't pack, you don't have to have all the extra fabric of a pouch. Yeah. yeah. But you can still get a jock strap. You can still get boxer briefs. You can still get, you know, whatever in their line that you want to get. Yeah. So I... having more choices that's that are like super gender affirming is who knew that that would happen in our lifetimes? Right. Right. To recognize that like we're trans men and you know, we have needs anatomical needs also, but it doesn't mean right. that we'd also don't want like cool looking drawers, right? Like right. I want, I want both. I want, I want right. all three. I want well-made, I want functional and I want, I want them to look cool or sexy, whatever yeah. the vibe is. Right. Like, yeah. so, and I love that they're being made by us for us, you know, like that's what right. I appreciate. And, and yeah. I'm, I'm, if, if Andrew Christian or one of those cis male centered brands wants to start making trans stuff, I will thank you have my money, exactly. but you know, being made for us by us is pretty, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. You know, and I think for, for, for a lot of folks, you know, probably the gayest piece of underwear you can wear is a jock strap, right? Because like, yeah, you want to have easy access. Yes. Sh show off that ass. Exactly. And you yeah. know, the strapping helps mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, but not everybody wants to pack while they're wearing a jock. So having options that are flat front, but you still get a jock. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. pretty, pretty damn cool that that yeah. is available to people. Yeah. I, I have a, I have a, a cake bandit jock and uh Mr. S jock. I love them both, but that, that versatile one, the cake bandit, cause I don't pack. Right. Fits me great. Yeah. It's comfortable. I feel I, well, the nice I thing struggle is that with they feeling... also carry bigger sizes too, which like that's yeah. the other thing about underwear is much like it is for women or has been for women in the past, the larger you are, the shittier your choices of <laughs> underwear have been. Yeah. You know, and while I love Andrew the look of Andrew Christian stuff, when I was bigger, I couldn't buy it. Yeah. Because I they don't unfortunately am hippie. I I I'm a wider dude in the in the hip section, yeah. and they 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 don't fit. They just give me like massive muff on top because they just cut me off. So yeah, yeah. yeah. That's often the thing that I find with jock straps for me is that the the waistband rolls over. Yeah. Because of the belly fat. Yeah. That's just not a cute look. No, no. No, and I like guts, right? I'm like, guts are great. So yeah. make something that that doesn't take away from that, you know? Yeah. 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 It's weird. Um, it's, it's it's not weird. Now, let me take that back. It's not weird. I, I apologize for that word. It is interesting to me that talking to, like, gender nonconforming folks who lean a little bit on the mask side, right? But not, not fully, right. right? They really right. truly are kind of gender nonconforming. Tend to, in my very informal survey of just the people in my life, this is not science, but my small sample size, tend to choose the masculine underwear. Right. Right, like, so, you know, really, really gender nonconforming in their appearance and their vibe and their identity, yeah. but still are like, Oh yeah, I'm wearing boxer briefs. I'm like, isn't that interesting? Why is that? Like, are women's underpants uncomfortable? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. I, you know, I think they are. You know, I mean, so here's the thing. So, like, my partner has women's boxer briefs. Oh uh, yeah, little 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 boy shorts, right? The little. No, they're like full on boxer briefs. They're like longer. Oh. Because the boy shorts, honestly, they bunch up. Like you get major wedgie butt from those. Oh, well, that's not going to work. Um, which doesn't seem comfortable. 
But she wears those to bed. Like, that's her... Sleepy time. Or, like, just lounging around the house. That's what she wears. Yeah. Um, you know. But, like, she likes... Like, French cut, like, high French cut underwear. But she wants them to be 100% cotton. And I'm like, I'm like, how? 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 But she's also uh, like not a sweaty person. So. Well, there you go. All right. See? She found what works. You know? But she hates a thong. I was going to. That's where I was going next. I. I mean, butt floss is just not comfortable for anybody. I, I, I had an ex, and and the, and those were her preferred drawers, right? And um, I, and I, I, I don't. As as the person looking, you wear what you want to wear, right? It's your body, your, your body, your choice. Me looking at it, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, my dog, I don't. I'm not like, oh, thong. Right, like right. I, I like it. It doesn't send me into the stratosphere, right? right. But I was also kind of curious. I'm like, what does it, what does it feel like? So I, right. I put them on. I'm like, this is not acceptable. Like I'm so, no. I, I, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm like, like I want to really pull out my butthole right now, which is not, yeah. a good thing. and I'm like, like I just want to not in a good out. way. No, I'm not like, hey, yeah. Right? Whereas jock straps will do that for you. Because they're not right on your, they're not, exactly. they're not, they're not hiking through the canyon. They're not like exactly. they're not blocking up your slot canyon. You know, they're like, you're giving a little yeah. lift and separate. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, is there any functional coverage of a thong underpants, right? Like I don't, there's like a no, little, like, loop, 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 there's, but there's like nothing. Yeah. So the sole purpose of them that I can discern is one, you don't get VPL. Okay. Yes. Okay. And they're sexy. Right, because your ass is right there, right? Like, good. Right. Thank you for showing me your ass. Like, I like your butt, right? But Right. Like, you could just but, be naked, too. Yeah. I just was... Like, why not just go commando? Like... Yeah. And they're like, if I can wear commando, tighter pants... Is commando ever anything that you did? I tried it for a minute. Um... I like and like like a minute. I think like two days, but I tried it in the navy. And dungarees are made of a material not of this earth. Dungaree, right. navy, old time like navy 100% dungarees. Polyester something. They had to be flame retardant. They were made from some material that came from some dark portal, right? And they didn't breathe, and they and you had to wash them regularly, right? So not wearing drawers in they're your like, dungarees was they're like double knit too they're fucking thick yeah and this There's was like no the, air the old style. exchange happening no it's like no. being inside a sauna yes so where are your drawers shipmates so i tried it literally i think it was two days i'm like no this, this is not for me this is not for no. me and that was when i started wearing boxers I remember the day I remember going into the exchange to buy them on ADAC Alaska. I went with a dude friend of mine who I'm sorry, it was not actually a dude. It was a trans woman. Um, but I was like, go with me. So they think that you're buying them. Um, uh, thank you, Calpurnia Adams. You went with me to buy my first men's underpants. Um, and yeah, so I tried commando for like a hot message minute. And let her know. <laughs> you, it's your fault. So, yeah. See yeah. now, now this would be great if we had her on the show today. Then we could ask her what her underwear journey has been. Oh yeah, yeah. When's the first time you bought non-boy underpants? Yeah, yeah. We should have yeah, California was... on sometime anyway. Yes, she is funnier than fuck all. She's hilarious and yeah, smarter than all of us put together. I will, I will invite her. 
I will invite her. Yeah, that'd be great. It'd be, yeah. it'd be lovely to have her on. Yes. Yeah. It would be fun. Yeah. So I like, yes, going back, I tried commando for a minute and I was like, nope. Grab it up. But yeah. No. Again, for me, you? sweaty factor. It's like, mm. oh, yeah. Yeah. Not it's a like, good look. No, this is not a good experience. This is not. This is not something I want to experience again. When you start, you know, you feel rivulets of sweat dripping down the insides of your thighs. No, thank you. And then I had really irrational fear of like, what if someone pants me? Who's going to pants me? I don't know. Did it make sense? Not a bit. But I was like, if I get pants, I'm just out in the world. So uh, that made me feel weird. So I will tell you, though, I was going commando earlier this year. Yeah. When I had my thumb surgery. Because I I literally could not wear anything other than elastic waist shorts or sweatpants <laughs> for like two months because I could not button anything. Sure, sure. You just need to be pull and go or drop and go. Yeah, exactly. So at some point I was like, you know what? It's kind of ridiculous for me to be wearing underwear and shorts that's a lot to try to manage one-handed it's inefficient yeah, yeah. so yeah. but i became a big fan of of shorts that have the boxer briefs built in like like swim trunky like, kind of thing yeah so they're kind of you know it's they're like workout shorts so they have like a built-in liner i.e boxer brief and then shorts you know a lighter shorts material on top those ended up being pretty damn comfortable i had no idea that is brilliant but it felt weird to not have a separate pair of underwear like there was a lack of security right that's what i'm saying yes yeah. Like there's some security in having underwear on. Yes. Yes. That is what I'm talking about. I felt I felt unsecure being commando. Yeah, and it I mm, yeah. I don't know, there's something about like there's something about that that lack of security between me and the outside world that somehow makes me feel like, oh, see, people are looking at me now Mm -hmm. that I don't have underwear on and they can see (laughs) that I'm, that I'm trans. So everybody in the world is Superman. (laughs) And it's like, dude, how many people are checking out your package on a day-to-day basis? Like they stop at the beard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and and that they're checking out your package to be like, is that man wearing underwear or not wearing wearing underwear? Hmm. Hmm. Right? <laughs> you know, and so when <laughs> one of the things that I've realized over time is that one of the main differences between cis straight men and cis gay men is not only their underwear choices, but how they package their junk inside the underwear. How they dress, I think is what the yes. tailors call it. You dress left or up or whatever. Yeah. Left or right or up. Um, yeah. So one of the things that I, in my informal uh cultural anthropological endeavors (laughs) have uh, determined is that for the most part, cis straight men, I'm not really sure where they put their stuff because you can't tell. They just sort of let it lay, right? Like, like, I, I, I really don't even know. Like, there does not seem to be a whole lot happening there. What are gay men doing? Cis gay men. You pull everything forward and up. 
Like because most like, of your package is your balls. Uh huh. That's what makes a bulge happen Junk. is your balls, right? So mm-hmm. gay men are pulling theirs up and forward. Oh. To make Seriously, it... like go out in the world and just look at men, especially if they're wearing jeans, especially if they're wearing like 501s. You can yeah. tell very quickly straight versus gay simply by package orientation. Hmm. Okay. Okay, Margaret Mead. I see what you're doing. All right. So now we have to go out and do field research. Hey, you I'm know, don't be creepy suspect. about it. Like, wear some sunglasses, maybe, <laughs> so that people don't <laughs> see you staring at their junk. But, um, okay. just saying. I guess that makes sense. Packing, packers, sit a little more out, right? They don't yeah. just lie flat. They sit a little more out. So, yeah. Yeah. To give, to give you the bulge. Yeah. Exactly. Which is why I think for some trans guys, when they're first transitioning and they and maybe they start wearing a packer, it feels very um it's it's like a shining beacon on your crotch, right? Like one of those neon arrows. Everybody is looking right <laughs> there all the time because oh my god, this thing is so big. And you probably yeah. have like the smallest packer on the market. <laughs> You know, um, that's like the squishiest of yeah. the squishy. And it's yeah. not like they have 3D balls either. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's sitting flat against you. Yeah. And you feel like this is the biggest thing in the world. And everybody's noticing. Right. Does everybody think I have a boner right now? When you've got right. like, boop. Yeah. A yeah. little boop. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I struggle with that. I tried packing for a while and I was like, I just feel, I was worried about falling out. I was like, what if I get, <laughs> uh, newsflash, sometimes I can get prone to catastrophic thinking, right? Like, oh, if I don't wear boxers, I'll get pantsed. Nobody's pantsing me. Um, if I get in a car crash and I'm wearing a packer, it'll fly out, right? Like I've never been in a car crash, knock on wood. Uh, but these were my these were my fears what, of like. Is it, was it just gonna like jump out of your pants and out the window? Maybe. Can you promise me that it wouldn't? No. Uh, so it could happen. <laughs> Welcome to anxiety. <laughs> the worst thing could happen. <laughs> like this point zero 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 one possibility of it. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Got Therefore, it. if it could happen, it will happen. That, it, that's how I see. All, yeah. Right. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I was like, Packers aren't for me. Um, but it did free me up to be like, what kind of drawers do I want to wear? It gives me freedom to be right. like, do I want to wear looser? Do I want to wear tighter? Do I want to wear longer? Do I want to wear shorter? So, yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just not for me. I, many 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 of us wear them and i'm like that is awesome i think it's cool i think it's kind of sexy i just i'm like i don't want to i don't want to mess with it <laughs> so the same with an stp you know, I'm i like, used I don't to mess with one. pack every day pre-pandemic and felt really naked leaving the house without a packer and i've been making yeah. my own packers since i transitioned like i to save to money day, make my own you know, yeah. um, um, some of that, like gack or fart sludge or whatever they call it, um, noise putty. Um, oh, the condoms and yeah. nylons. And then I okay. and then I make a waistband so I don't have to worry about it falling out. It's never going to fall no. out. Using your noggin, there you go. <laughs> um, and you can make whatever size you want. So Do you have a you have a video on your Insta about making it. So I have a really short video on Insta. I need to make a longer one that I can put on YouTube that like goes through the process of how to make it. But okay, I'll I'll do that. Uh, okay. But you can find 
you can find stuff on the internet about how to make your own pack, packer. But Packers. Okay. Then the pandemic came, and I didn't leave the house. Yeah. That much. Yeah. So what's the point? Yeah. And then I just kind of so stopped now... wearing a packer all the time. Okay. And you're comfortable? You feel good? Yeah. Most of the time, yeah. Sometimes okay. I, you know, like, I think sometimes if we're going out somewhere for the evening, certainly at leather events, I feel more like I should pack. Okay. Or if we're going out to the leather bar, I feel like I should pack. Yeah. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I really don't anymore. Yeah, and I'm surprisingly I, okay with that. I packed more pre-transition, right? Then, really? Yeah, I packed, yeah. When I was just sort of, you know, he, him, and going by mail name, binding, and packing. But then I transitioned, and I'm like, eh, it's not for me. I don't want to, it's one more so, thing I got to worry about. You know, I mean, I've certainly seen the evolution of packers and what's available. The first packers that I had were just like these, um, like foam, like a soft but firm foam that was shaped yeah. Yeah. kind of appropriately. Yeah. Um, I actually remember auctioning one off at a leather event in New York City during Pride 1994. So just before I transitioned. Um, so I auctioned it off like right out of my pants. Um, <laughs> I don't remember how much money it raised for whatever we were raising money for, but that was kind of a fun experience. Yeah. And then I started making my own. And then probably, then there was a guy, another trans guy who was making one similar to the ones that I make, but he was covering them with liquid latex so that they would last longer. Oh yeah. And it wasn't until probably, I don't know. I want to say what late nineties that like the Mr. Limpy came along mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. 2000s. That was my first one. That was my first one. Yeah. 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 And now there's like so many choices. So many choices. Like you go on Etsy and there's yeah. gajillions. Yeah. And there's different sizes and there's, you know, skin tone options now because they were all just like this like pink was the option that we had. Yeah. In the 90s. And yeah. like a and really so now, unnatural color of pink. Pink. Yeah. Yeah. Like a like a pink panther pink. Yeah. So Yeah. And again, thank thank God, right? Like let's 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 let everybody have some have some representation. So Absolutely. And I yeah. I don't know if you remember, but there was a like early two thousands there was a prosthetics maker from Australia that started making realistic like much more realistic looking prosthetics that you would use medical adhesive to glue on. Oh, well, and they could stay on for some period of time. Well, no, but they were like completely handcrafted and color matched made, and all of that stuff. And they were like a thousand dollars. I'm like, I am not going to pay a thousand dollars when I can make one that's perfectly acceptable for me for 15 bucks. thousand dollars. I once bought a truck for $500. Come on a thousand dollars. All right. You know, well. and I mean, I can understand that for some people, their bottom dysphoria is such that they really need that. Sure. Look when they Realistic. look in the mirror or they look down at their body. Right. Yeah. I sure. just could not justify the cost. And I think for me too, like I started thinking about 
would that actually solve my bottom dysphoria or would that make me even more aware of it? Because now I've got to shave everything down there to adhere yeah, this gonna... medical adhesive. And I, yeah. for me, being denuded of hair completely would be more dysphoric for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I get it. Like, yeah, hair is is uh, which is not to say that I don't manscape because you know manscaping is important, particularly if Keep you want tidy. anybody up in your business. Um, and also, you just don't get pissy balls that way because hmm. that's just benefits. not nobody likes yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Some people might like that. Um. It's not my favorite thing, um, but like I just feel like if I was completely Shaped. careless, yeah, that would be that would make me more aware of what I didn't have. Make makes total sense, and I but and that kind of shine a light on why I don't pack. For me, it's the packing makes me more dysphoric packing makes me feel like yeah that's not real in my head just for me right it's like i gotta right. put this thing in and it makes me even less attached to my natural body for some reason so i get it you know find find the find the thing that makes you most comfortable and that's the beauty of life right what's super comfortable yeah. for you it may be different than what's super comfortable for me but right. there's there's no right or wrong way Exactly. There's no, like, there's I'm no really right fascinated by, yeah. Like I'm really fascinated by the guys that have meta and then pack afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I've, I've had a meta and putting things on is a little smashy. So. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little, there's a little, yeah. 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 But I know some guys that do. So it's like they went through the experience of having the meta, but then that's not satisfied their needs around bottom dysphoria yeah. in terms of being clothed. Yeah. And I wonder like how many of us have this perception of how much other people are looking at our crotch during the day. Yeah. I, I wonder, as trans men, do we look at men's packages more because we're trying to figure out what the... The cattle range hate, thing. Yeah, like, are we looking at cis men as the model of what we're supposed to look like, right? Because they've been the example for so many years, right? So, or yeah, or is that what everybody everybody looks at people's junk, right? Well, I don't know, but um, I mean, I, I don't, don't look at women's crotches. No, their eyeballs are up here, Spencer. The nipples are the eyeballs. Are the eyeballs? <laughs> Thank you, Bimini. Which, for any of you who no. don't watch Drag Race, you have no idea what we're talking about. But one of the just greatest means that you in the history of the series. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I think um, the takeaway here is is that you can wear whatever underwear you want to wear. Um, right. You can pack. And you if can you pack, pack or not. Right. Um, there are choices and options out there. There's trans-made underpants. There's not. Yeah. Right. But it is it is a common thread that runs through a lot of our stories is that first time. Yeah. Or when you realized it's like it starts in it starts in the drawers, right? Like it seems to be it when does. I'm like, mm, I don't want to wear that, but I want to wear that. So right. yeah. And and it's it's one of those things that you can do that's super gender affirming that nobody else sees. Yeah. Yeah. So get it. So get those man pants. You can hide it, hide it from your parents, you can hide it, you know, if you're still living at home, you can hide it from your peers at college. Like, 
you can do what's comfortable for you and nobody other than maybe somebody that you're in a relationship whether you're having sex with knows what your underwear choices are yeah 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 and uh just you know we're we're trans dudes talking about this stuff and like i said it in in our culture we know that it's acceptable to wear more masculine clothing regardless of your gender than it is right. female clothing which is terrible so let's normalize right. being able to wear whatever underwear you want to wear and not gendering exactly. underwear. let's 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 exactly. go to that. underwear is just underwear so yeah 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 all right so if you want to wear sheer things that are frilly and all of that do it have at it it's just some drawers it's just some underpants That's exactly yeah. yeah um all right all right, so that's I'm gonna today. go put on some new boxer briefs myself and excellent get to it. Um, excellent. good to see you, sir. Good to see you, uh, everybody. This is the Stefan Show, and uh, you can find us on Instagram, you can find us on the YouTube, you can find us on everywhere, Spotify, Spotify, and we will see you next time. Yeah. Please let us know if you have ideas that you'd like us to talk about. Gold mines. We've got gold mines up here. We do. Come mine it. Many, many <laughs> ideas. But let us know what you want to hear about. All right, everybody. Have All a good right. week. We'll see you next Adios. time. Bye. Hey, thank you for listening to this episode of This and Show. Do us a favor and give us a follow on Instagram and YouTube at This and Show. And you can email your comments or questions to us at thisfnshow at gmail.com. See you next time.